An inspection of newly harvested Fukushima rice has found levels of radiation above government limits for the first time since the nuclear crisis began in March. The Fukushima prefectural government says tests have detected 630 becquerels per kilogram of cesium in rice from a farm in the Onami district, about 50 kilometers from the disabled Fukushima nuclear plant. The government's limit is 500 becquerels per kilogram. The prefecture says the farm produced about 840 kilograms of rice this year. It says the harvested rice is being kept in a warehouse and has not gone into circulation. The prefecture will monitor the situation to guarantee the safety of the rice. In the Onami district, we will re-examine crops from all 154 farms and determine the cause of the contamination. Last month, the prefecture allowed shipments from the district after tests at two locations confirmed radioactive levels were safe. It's paved a very good way for starting the remediation work, work itself. Well, first of all, we acknowledge, we did eight acknowledgement, finding out several strong things we, we felt that had been done in a very good way. And we provided 12 uh, pieces of, of advice. First of all, I think uh, a lot of good work is ongoing in Japan. The commitment in all levels, national, prefecture, and, and local, was impressive to all of us. So that's the first point I would like to mention. Second thing, we all felt that in the early phase of the accident and early phases of, of the fallout and remediation, it was important that the government did, with the prefectorates, uh, conservative work. In other words, they protected, they remediated more than was perhaps necessary, just to protect people and environment well. Now that uh, the information is coming, very well on, on different measurements, different technologies, different methods. We advise to uh, revisit those uh, approaches because we felt that there might be uh, some room for removing the conservatism from some of the activities. In other words, doing only those things that uh, are basically necessary and not uh, cleaning up everything. Because that would then lead uh, to, uh, first of all, a little bit less waste in, in certain areas and also ease people's burdens uh, a bit more than, than perhaps needed. What the fuck? You then the third point I would uh, point out is, is perhaps that uh, not all the soil that has been removed is necessarily radioactive waste. Uh, many other countries uh, have experienced the same type of issues of how do you define what is waste and not, what is not waste. There are lots of examples that uh, how the limit and the limits can be set in a, in a realistic way. So we encourage uh, Japanese authorities to, to make use of these examples and benefits of, of other countries and thereby also uh, minimizing some amounts of waste used and then having other ways of, of dealing that type of very low uh, active material in recycling, reusing it, and, and not just creating a, a challenge how to dispose that, that type of waste. Could you hear everything? Yes. I even went so far as to falsify the report. The agenda of the ruling elite is the product of a destructive worldview, based on their beliefs that there's not enough to go around, that some people are more deserving than others, and that their own safety depends on maintaining absolute control over the rest of us. In short, their worldview is based on scarcity and fear. But as powerful as they are, the architects of the New World Order cannot create their dreadful vision without our collusion. To stop them, to render their agenda obsolete, we have to wake up. A persistent fever kept Japan's emperor from hosting the king. Emperor Akihito is expected to remain in the hospital for a while yet. Doctors at the University of Tokyo Hospital said the emperor had a mild fever and bronchitis when he entered the hospital on November 6th. They say his temperature remains high and he's lost his appetite. And they say he may be developing bronchitis again or he may have developed a new respiratory infection. 
The doctors won't say how much longer the emperor will have to stay in the hospital. They say that even if he can be discharged within the week, they want him to rest until the end of the month. A finding by Japanese researchers may help develop new drugs for treating cancer. They say a gene known to cause a type of lung cancer also produces a protein that does the opposite. It actually inhibits the spread of cancer. The gene is called TTF1. It is known to cause adenocarcinoma of the lung, the hardest to treat of all lung cancers. But patients who have this gene are also reported to have fewer relapses after surgery. That puzzling fact was the subject of research by Professor Takashi Takahashi of the Nagoya University Graduate School of Medicine. His team cultured lung cells taken from healthy persons with the TTF1 gene. They found that the gene produced a type of special protein that worked to slow the growth of cancer cells. This gene has a function like an accelerator in a car, but it can at the same time work like a brake. The professor says a detailed analysis of the effects of the protein could pave the way for the development of new cancer treatment medicines. The love of money is the root of all evil, and it is the love of money which has the potential to exterminate, to render extinct the entire human race. The International Energy Agency says Japan is likely to face a surge in natural gas imports by the year 2035, and that's if it stops building new nuclear power plants in the wake of the Fukushima accident. The IEA Executive Director Maria Vanderhoven announced the forecast at a news conference in Tokyo Wednesday. The IEA chief said that by 2035, Japan's annual cost for natural gas will be more than double the current amount. That's if construction of new nuclear reactors is halted. Vanderhoven warned that such an increase could have a substantial impact on Japan's trade balance. Every country decides on its own energy mix. By deciding on it, and for instance leaving out nuclear, that's, a, that's the right of a country. But the same is, and it's not a right, but it's an obligation for the same country to answer the meet, and to meet the demands for energy. Because if you don't meet it with nuclear, you have to meet it in a different way. Now she went on to say that the higher energy costs would cause a sharp increase in electricity charges, which would be a burden on Japanese industry. The love of money is the root of all evil. U.S. researchers say North Korea is making rapid progress on building a light water nuclear reactor. They say the exterior may be complete within one year. Experts on North Korean affairs at Johns Hopkins University released satellite images of a nuclear complex in Nyombyon. They say an image taken in May shows trenches for pipelines to carry cooling water to the reactor's construction site. Researchers say work had begun by September on a structure believed to be a turbine containment building. They say cylindrical materials likely to become part of the reactor building were visible by early this month. The group says the reactor may be externally complete in 6 to 12 months. But they say operations are unlikely to begin for another two to three years because North Korea needs time to install machinery and fuel. North Korea announced last year that it's building the light water reactor for power generation. Earlier this month, it said the reactor will begin operating soon. On Tuesday, the U.S. again called on North Korea to halt its nuclear program. Any uh, construction of a light water reactor would uh, violate uh, existing U.N. Security Council resolutions. This is like the, the last effort of a particular phase of civilization. It's its last gasp, really, and I often use the metaphor of the caterpillar becoming the butterfly because the caterpillar crunches its way through the ecosystem. It's very destructive. It eats 300 times its weight in a day until it's so bloated that it hangs itself up and goes to sleep and its skin turns into a hardened chrysalis. And then in its body, you get these imaginal cells. Biologists actually call them that, forming within the caterpillar's body. The caterpillar's body then actually becomes a nutritive soup for those cells. 
But what's important about that metaphor is that the old and the new coexist for a while. And it's the job of the caterpillar to preserve its life. It's a desperate government that we have now trying to control oil in the Middle East and wanting now to promote nuclear energy and all these things that they know better, but they have to play out the role of protecting themselves. It's their job. And if you love butterflies, you don't go around stepping on caterpillars. So we can't hate them. It doesn't do any good. But if you want alternative energy, you don't ask an oil economy uh, administration to produce it for you. We have to produce it. We imaginal cells have to show that it's cheaper, more efficient, and, and more effective. Our job is to build a new world. If we had the vision and a worldview that says our crisis is a birth and everybody's needed and everybody will have more of what they truly want, you could turn this desperate world into a renaissance of human creativity and love. A delegation accompanying the king brought along a rare gift, two swallowtail butterflies native to Bhutan. Ludlow's Bhutan swallowtail is the size of an adult's palm. Its wing have dark red markings and three tails. Researchers from Japan and Bhutan spotted one such butterfly in August, the first sighting in nearly 80 years. The delegation from Bhutan gave one male and one female swallowtail to Japanese experts. Importing and exporting the butterfly without permission is banned by the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. This donation was possible after Bhutan conducted official export procedures. We hope research on these butterflies will help us study the evolution of wildlife in the Himalaya mountains. What Rosa Goncharova showed here in her talk when she was studying the bank voles, the little animals that live in the Chernobyl zone, was that, that once you irradiate these, these, these creatures, and also human beings, Dubrova has shown this, you, you initiate a, pro a process called genomic instability. And then this is, this is like sort of throwing a switch. And what it does is it increases the genetic mutation rate, uh, quite apart from any mutation that the uranium causes or, or the radiation causes. That's a separate thing. This is like an automatic switch that is thrown at quite low doses. And then you pass this switch on to your children and they pass it on to their children and so on. And then with the bank rolls, uh, I know that they've studied the bank rolls and found that 22 generations have still got this switch. Now, I've studied the nuclear test veterans. Uh, these, are, these are the men who worked for the British army uh, at the nuclear tests in the Pacific in the, in the 60s and uh, I studied their children and their grandchildren and what we found was that the children of these test veterans, this is the British, British Nuclear Test Veteran Association, have about a, ten, a nine-fold excess of congenital malformations but the extraordinary thing is that the grandchildren also have an eight-fold excess of congenital malformations so the normal genetic idea that you you pick off the weak and then it goes down and then you get the strong and eventually, you know, this is the old nuclear idea of, of, the, of the nuclear war. All the, we, we just have radiation resistant people who survive. It's just not true. What happens is that it throws a big switch and everybody is affected. And it's, you're affected for generations and generations. So it's, it doesn't even matter if the uranium goes away. It doesn't matter if these radionuclides all decay. Because you've imprinted something on the human genome which is there forever. That's the danger. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.